Karen. Give your cell phone to my child now. No, it's mine and you're not entitled to it. Karen, how, how dare, dare you? you? Hey guys, welcome to Voicey here. We've got a great show for you today. So sit back, relax, happy birthday if today's your birthday, and enjoy the show. Okay, a little bit of background. Where I live, there is a car show held in memory of someone in our town who died of brain cancer, and all proceeds go to cancer research. The show is held at a raceway nearby where everyone is welcome, and kids get in for free while the parents have to pay two Australian dollars to get in. While the people entering the car show or are going to go around the track pay a premium. Now the story. I had entered my car into the car show and paid extra for it to go around the track during the time event. The car show part was a few hours before the warm-up, before time trials, where anyone entered could do up to three practice laps to get used to the course. Now this is where the child came in. Before the practice laps start, the kid, EK, said he liked my car, 1977 Leyland Mini, and started asking me about it and how I got it. All was normal. My family, who was with me, said I should let him sit in it, and I agreed, but thought I could take it a step further and let the kid sit in the passenger seat during one of the warm-up laps. I said to him I would let him go around the track with me, on account I have his parents' permission. When he heard that, his face lit up and he went to go get his parents. I thought all was normal, until this happened. I was waiting around for the kid and his parents to show up. I hadn't moved from my spot and was doing some pre-checks on my car before I went out. 20 minutes had passed, and I thought it was taking a little long for him to come back to give me an answer, but I thought I'd wait a little longer, just in case he got lost. Next thing I know, another 20 minutes have passed. Then, another 20 minutes. I had waited an hour for him to show back up and needed to get on the track. My car was ready half an hour ago, and I had already gotten permission from the race organizers to have a young passenger for one lap of the practice run. I'd gotten tired and went to start the car when the kid showed up with his parents, EP. They instantly asked me if I was up to something. By the way, I just turned 18 at the time and had my girlfriend with me at the race keeping track of my times. I told them I just wanted to give the kid a chance to see what it was like in a road race car. Just like how someone let me when I was his age. After hearing that, they took a few steps back and started talking. But they took 10 minutes to do so. Tired of waiting, I told them it was final call. It's either a yes or a no, and I need to get on the track now. EPs gave me a stink eye and finally said EK could go. I had him get in and put the five point on, and we headed for the first practice run. I told him to hold on and don't scream while I was driving. He seemed to understand, but during the lap he did the exact opposite. Once it was over, I had a headache and was still trying to be nice and asked him if he had fun. He said he did and wanted to go again. I said from now on, I had to be by myself and he started yelling at me and got out of the car slamming my door behind me. I had had it at that point and just went to do my last two laps. Once they were over, we stopped for a quick break and this is where everything went down. First up, I had the EPs come up to me and yell at me for not letting their kid go again. I explained to them that I technically wasn't allowed and only got permission to do one lap with him. They were livid. Next thing I know is that one of the organizers said to them their kid could go around the track in one of the rental track cars with his father, but it would cost $300. The EK said no and that he wanted to go around in my car, but I said that he couldn't. Next thing I know is EP, the father, is yelling at how it's a ripoff and we're wasting the money on people who are going to die anyway. I lost it at that point and told him to leave. But the organizer said that what they said was fine and that we don't need to make this work. I left with the organizer after that to avoid more of a confrontation. Skip forward half an hour and the time trail is about to start. And guess who came back? EP, the mother. She said she was sorry and wanted to talk. I said later, and she yelled out, $400. She was offering $400 for my entire car. I told her no and to get out of here. Next thing I know is the other EP rocks up and says $700 for the car. I said no and that I have more money in that car than they probably have in their bank. 
The father responded saying that my sad rusted piece of crap is not worth more than a grand and that I would get more from crushing it than selling it. I told them to leave as they would not like what would happen next if they get in my way. I hopped in my car and drove off right past them. Once the time trail was over, I went to park in my spot to find my girlfriend and grandfather being talked to by cops while the EPs were pointing at me. Two officers came over and told me to turn off and get out of my vehicle. I did so and asked what was going on. The EPs called the cops claiming that I stole their car and did something to EK when I had him in the car. I told the cops the car was in my name and I have footage inside from a camera in my car that I use for studying my driving techniques. They asked to see the footage and I willingly showed them. They say I did nothing and I had my parents bring down the proof of sale for my car. The EP still tried to screw me over until EP, father, hit a bystander. That's the problem if you've got a cool hobby. It's gonna be a natural magnet to entitled kids and their entitled parents. So you need to start thinking now how you're going to defend yourself against these EPs. Or else they're going to take you by surprise like this poor soul. He tried to do a nice thing, and he ended up having a bad day because of it. Okay, so quick backstory for context. I live in a small suburb area in Australia that is made up entirely of 2-4 to four acre blocks of land. It is 2 minutes away from a town. However, it feels very isolated as it is a small valley about two streets of these large blocks. Most properties have some form of hobby farm with a couple chickens, two to six sheep, and one property has six grapevines. We have a horse, but our property is one of the most slopey, so I tend to ride 15 minutes down the road to an area that I can rent. It's normally very peaceful as there is barely any traffic, and most people slow down if they drive past or if they're doing something noisy near the road. They'll give me a wave to check if it's okay. My horse is notoriously hard to spook, often sneaking up on people with a live chainsaw. And my neighbor permanently has an excavator, which she could fool most people into thinking is her best friend. So two days ago, I decided to take her riding out, something I've done a million times without issue. Two doors down from me are the only truly hated family in the area. We'll call them EF. The kids are often playing in the middle of the street, blind corner on narrow road that you have to come around fast. And the parents blame others for scaring their kids when they're driving. There are a hundred stories I could tell, letting the rest of the street raise a cow they bought before selling it without offering fence feed property damage compensation. Letting their 12 and 15 year old dig up our neighbor's wiring with an excavator right before Easter. You know, the usual. And now finally, my story. I heard lots of yelling from their house and could hear they were definitely up to something as we approached. When I got level with their bushes around their property, my horse stopped dead. I assumed she had spotted a bird or something as she did not seem tense, only curious. That's when I saw the two younger boys, 8 to 12, waving at me from about a meter away hidden behind a dirt pile. I waved back and took another couple steps forward before I noticed that they were holding one of the biggest air rifles I had ever seen. It was probably as wide as my waist and stood well over the boy's head where they were crouched. And just for those who aren't aware, in Australia an air rifle is a type A firearm which means it's a lower class weapon that is allowed but you are still required to have a license to own one, which has strict rules such as certain distances from street roads, must be in lockable cabinet, pest control only, self-defense is not a permittable need when applying for a license. You must be 18 or over to have a license, or if you are 12 and have a fully licensed adult supervising, you are also permitted, with slightly stricter rules. You must also have your license renewed every three years. So not shockingly, I was a little surprised to see one in our area, but as someone who grew up in a cop's house in the middle of nowhere, they're far from unfamiliar. As I'm riding past, I hear yelling from another dirt pile. I assume it was the father and older brother. I stopped just in case, but wasn't sure if they'd start shooting. I'm also well in the verge here as it is a blind corner, so better to stay safe than sorry. Just as I turn to look at the boys to check that they're not using their rifles, I suddenly hear rapid shots and dirt start spraying up right now where we are stood. And the younger boys fired back. My horse flips out. She has crap hitting her legs. It's not that loud, but we're close. And as a rescue pony, I'm sure she's heard a gun or two in her time. 
She starts trying to race away and is scuttling onto the road and bucking and panicking. So I yell out, what the heck, stop. It immediately stops and I hear the dad yell out, what? Cue entitled parents scene as he comes out of hiding. Sorry, you were just terrifying the horse. I didn't want to get hurt. We didn't see you. Really? You waved at me. Yeah, but we didn't think it was important. Me turning to the dad. Just so you know, I think you might be a little closer to the road. We got sprayed and I think that's what's really scared the horse. You could hit a car. The kid's annoyed. We're just playing. Who cares about the horse? Me turning back to the dad. Um, okay. I was just a little concerned about others' safety. Maybe you could explain why firing near an animal could be danger? Noticing dad looks ticked and probably said the wrong thing. Look, I don't know who the heck you are, but you've ruined my time playing with my kids. If you don't want your precious freaking pony getting scared, ride on your own property and get off mine. At this point, the horse is getting a little freaked by the source of the noise approaching her and is backing up onto the road again. So I turn and leave, texting a parent as I did, as, like I said, I live with a cop. While this interaction was scary, I probably would not be writing about it here if what happened on the way back didn't occur. I have to walk past their house again, and I spent a lot of time on the corner listening for any shots as the horse, even after working for a while, was visibly getting tense as we approached the spot again. This time, the two youngest are on scooters on the road as usual, and this is when I know they've really scared my horse for a while. She's not scared of scooters at all. These kids ride past her regularly. She's seen them a million times, and I've never seen her flinch at them. No, she's now scared of the boys themselves. As they got closer, she stopped and started backing up as they approached. I managed to get her still as they laugh as they approach her, and just in front of us, one of them tries to jump and spin the scooter, which failed loudly against the road, causing her to literally kick it out, which she has never done before. Last thing I hear is, She really needs to get that horse under control! Before I give her a bit of rein to just race herself the last couple meters home and escape. So yeah, if you take anything away from this, just remember that if you happen to be illegally letting your kids shoot a weapon too close to roads in violation of your license regulations, and you've managed to tick off everyone else on the road from the noise, don't tick off a cop's kid. Especially not about the thing she's most protective of. Thanks. Perhaps I misunderstood the situation, but wasn't she on the road? She wasn't on their property? Maybe I missed something in the story. Also, to be firing Class A weapons, maybe it depends on the state, but I'm pretty sure you have to be on a larger piece of land than two to four acres. Or you have to be at a shooting range. Because there's a risk that the projectile could go on somebody else's property, which is illegal. It sounds like this family was just completely careless and had no consideration to anybody else. Not the kind of neighbors you'd want. The entitled mother in this story is my aunt's father's sister, mother-in-law, my cousin's grandmother. Ever since my aunt married her husband, an awesome guy, his mother had been very critical of her. She was a strong woman. She had survived on her own in 1940s rural Mexico, before marrying a doctor who made good money. Even then, she insisted on being independent, kept her job and managed her finances, all while raising my aunt's husband and his siblings almost on her own. Instead of making her a humble person understanding of others' difficulties, she became a bitter woman who hated everyone who had it easier than her. It didn't help that her husband died at a young age. Dealing with her was also very difficult. You were either with her or against her. She controlled her children with an iron fist and tried to control every aspect of their lives. Who they befriended, who they dated, where they traveled, what they studied. She was never outright abusive or rude to my aunt, but it was obvious that she didn't like her or any other of her daughters or son-in-law for that matter. But she was very nice to her grandchildren. She liked giving them nice gifts and cooking all their favorite dishes. The first time I met her, I thought she was the sweetest old lady for how she treated my cousin. It was until she lashed at me for disagreeing with her on the tiniest thing that I realized how she was. September 9th, 2007. A strong earthquake shook Mexico City. Hundreds of people lost their lives and thousands lost their homes. Among them, my aunt and her family. They went to the only place they could go, to her mother-in-law's house. My cousin was the most affected. She witnessed how a part of her high school collapsed 
killing a couple of students, and she lost her home. At first, my cousin's grandmother was delighted to have them home. She thought my aunt would be her servant, while she could spend all her day talking to her son and spoiling my cousin. But my aunt and her husband still had to work, and my cousin was in no condition to be spoiled. Her grandmother was furious. Two days after the earthquake, my aunt realized my cousin was getting worse, and called a psychological support line established specifically to help those affected by the earthquake. My cousin's grandmother heard them and lashed against her. If she had dealt with much worse, including two devastating earthquakes more, and had survived, my cousin could too. It's just that she was too weak and pathetic. My aunt tried to defend her, only to be met with insults and the implication that her husband's worst mistake was marrying her. When my cousin's father arrived, they all argued for hours. He demanded an apology from his mother, who responded by throwing them out of her house. They had to go and live with a family friend for a couple of months. He promised that he would never talk to his mother until she apologized to his wife and daughter. Instead, my cousin's grandmother tried to have her other children on her side. None of them agreed with her. They all knew what had happened, and everyone sided with my cousin's family. She was furious. She demanded all of her children to apologize for disagreeing with her. When none did, she cut them off. She wouldn't cave in. She wouldn't accept she was in the wrong. She would rather never talk to any of her children or grandchildren again than admit she was wrong. Cue to yesterday. My cousin received a call from her grandmother's brother. She had died earlier from Co-19 complications. None of her children knew she had caught it. None of her grandchildren knew she was in hospital. She had finally died alone, but at least she didn't have to admit she was wrong. Whew, and that's a bit of a chilling end to that story. Let it be a reminder to us that sometimes we can get what we want in life, but it doesn't mean it's the best thing for us. Now go out there and hug somebody you love who doesn't deserve it, and forgive somebody who's hurt you. I mean, or don't, I'm not your dad. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.